Hi everyone, it's Job, and today I wanted to share three principles or tips I keep in mind when I'm feeling creatively stuck or want to create a more simple journal layout in my journal. I like to think of these three tips as a secret weapon in my journaling knowledge arsenal, which I can reach for when I'm feeling stuck or just want to add some diversity to my journal pages. First off, we have minimal journaling spreads, which is a little bit of a surprise to some uh, because I definitely need to say this. I am not a minimalist journaler. I love the aesthetic of minimal journal pages, but I also love full filled out layouts with little to no blank space on the page. But when it comes to minimalist journaling, I absolutely love how it looks and i love the effortlessly chic look that it gives off but i do need to say that just because something looks minimal and just has less um like stationary or items on a spread doesn't mean that it's easier to pull off in some ways there's a lot of um skill and design knowledge that you need to kind of pull off a more minimalist aesthetic because you need to take into account um like design and knowledge of blank space so uh, please take the following tips um, with caution because i don't really count myself as a minimalist journaler and even the spreads that i'm going to show you um, are my take of the minimalist aesthetic in terms of journaling but it doesn't really you know look minimalist compared to other people's minimal journaling spread. So um, I'll take you to the journaling portion of um, this first tip and I'll walk you through um, the process. So now I'm going to walk you through a quote unquote minimal journaling spread. And again, you know, my take on a minimalist aesthetic in my journal is a little bit different from others because this might not be considered as minimalist as what others may think but for me this is as minimal as it gets um, so first off i'm starting uh with a mini collage with two elements on the top of the left hand side of the spread and i'm using this vellum sheet that i have and then this lovely himmy curry calendar sheet that is like a small mini calendar that you tear off for each uh day and it's really lovely and i think the theme kind of of, um was inspired by the himmy curry calendar so i went for like a night theme so i'm pulling this um transfer sticker from our studio and i'm adding that to um, the bottom of the spread and if there's one thing that you can kind of notice already is that i'm really leaving a lot of breathing space at um the top actually all edges of um, the page because I just want there to be more breathing room and I think um, to pull off a more minimal aesthetic I uh, I subconsciously pull my elements closer to the center of the spread to leave a bigger lip around um, the whole spread because I've realized that when I look at more minimalist journaling there's always a lot more white space and although I have a hard time having you know more white space or negative space in my journals i realized that just by adding a bigger lip of like a border around your um spread kind of allows for that and um it's also kind of hard for me because i tend to bring um, a lot of elements to the edge of the the page like i usually add a washi that kind of um will end or start at the edge of the page or i'll have like um, a corner of a page fully covered in craft paper um, but i realized that um, by taking things closer to the center of the spread i realized that it adds a bigger lip of like white space and it therefore adds you know more breathing room to your journal spread so even if you end up creating a uh, page like i'm doing right now which doesn't look as um minimalist because it's still quite full it still has a minimalist feel because there's just more breathing room and there's just less distractions because most of your um i guess journaling and your collage elements are towards the center of the page if that makes any sense um and as you can see i only added another strip of washi to the bottom of the page and that kind of adds as a little edge to where i will stop journaling and it also grounds that uh, transfer sticker that i added to the bottom of the page and again it's hard to not add any washi so i 
I had to add a little bit of washi tape and I added some stamping to add some texture to the page and it just says Mondays because it was a Monday and it was a days um, but I thought it added a little bit of um, like variation to the page so it's not just collage elements there are some stamping elements and then now we're working on the right hand side of the spread and I thought this is, would be a nice opportunity to kind of just create a collage uh, without any writing because I've already finished the writing for this uh, journal spread um, and I can really focus on creating a, a collage that is quite minimal but is still my style so again I chose this gray um, letterpress paper and I have a typewritten quote that I um, I think wrote quite a while back but it's from tick tick boom it's such a good musical um and i still like listen to like 3090 and some of the songs in that musical um on netflix uh quite a bit so i thought i would incorporate that um and i wanted to use um different textures because i feel like uh since you are working with less elements you kind of need to figure out how you can layer with less things but make it look more intentional so uh that letterpress um, gray uh, paper has like a subtle like um, like lined texture to it. It, al it almost looks striped. And then I added um, this tag from my new pair of shoes, my new balance shoes, and it matched the color aesthetic. And I did wear those shoes that day. And then I think the vellum um, typewritten sheet really adds to it because it adds that another layer of texture and trans uh, transparency to the page. And then I just added some simple brush lettering that says new shoes to add um, like a little bit more of an organic feel because everything is a little bit more rigid and a little bit more square or rectangular on this page. And I wanted some sort of movement and I thought that some brush lettering would really add to um, that little organic feel that uh, this collage was missing. Before we move on to the second tip, I just wanted to say why I think um, minimal journaling spreads is a nice thing to keep in your journaling arsenal because I don't know if you're someone like me, but sometimes I get so stuck in the way I do things in my journal and I get stuck in a rut and I feel like having uh, you know, a backup aesthetic, if you will, like a minimal journaling aesthetic is nice to kind of reach into when you're kind of feeling tired with what you're doing just because it just changes things up. And sometimes I flip through my journals and I'll come across a spread like the ones that I'm showing you right now and I'm just like, whoa, where did this come from? And it really just um, adds a nice change to everything. And I really suggest um, also trying these uh, minimalist spreads out when you have less with you because it works to your advantage because you use less uh, journaling supplies in these spreads and therefore it's good for when you're like cafe journaling or journaling in a space where you don't have your full <laughs> journaling uh, collection or stationary collection at your disposal. But let's move on to the next journaling uh, item. The next tip I have for you when you're feeling like you're in a rut or just want to create a little bit more of a simple journaling spread is actually to use a monochrome color palette or just using a few colors um, or limited color palette when you're creating a journal spread. I have kind of shown you a few examples, but I kind of journal in this way most of the time just because I love it when you know, things look a little bit more cohesive. And I think having a monochrome palette, so you only have one color um, that you're working with and different shades of that one color, or you're using a limited palette, so you're maybe only using like two colors, like in this spread, some gold and some blue. Um, and that's kind of your main two colors that you're using for your spread. And I think I enjoy this um, method of journaling or this like tip um, when I'm journaling because it just makes things look very cohesive without working too hard and it also works if you have a little bit more of again a limited um, stationary stash with you because you're just curating a few colors that you like and then you're just using that for um, your journaling spread so i'm going to show you how i do this in a journaling session right now so first up i like to set my color palette first and I usually have one element that it becomes the dictating item that 
kind of sets the color palette for today's spread. So I actually had this tearaway calendar sheet from the Typodarium calendar and it actually had this lovely kind of pinky mauve color and it has um, like a photo or drawing um, of Aquarius. So this was, you know, filmed during Aquarius season. Um, and so I wanted to kind of pick and choose things that would complement that mauvey pink color um, from that calendar sheet. So I pulled like a few things from, you know, various different um, stashes of scrap paper. And I always like to use scrap paper when I'm journaling, um, especially um, when it's like a color palette like this, because I just think that it's more fun to use scrap paper um, and it's a nice way of recycling in your journal uh, because you're not tossing away these papers that you find um, and i always seem to encounter um, these lovely papers in my day-to-day -day life like in um, like packaging and newspapers and like everyday items so it's always nice to just keep and hold on to them so um, i found this lovely um kind of baby pink paper that was from my hours studio package um envelope and then i had uh, this uh scrap paper of uh this i think it's like a cherry blossom origami paper but i have a scrap of it because i'm pretty sure i use it um in a different journal spread and then i chose this uh sticker uh vellum like sticker or washi sticker from this pink uh kind of sticker pad um, and it just has like this nice floral element to it and then lastly i layered um this letterpress note card in this warm toned gray and although it's not pink per se i think the warm toned gray kind of picks up the warm tones in the initial mauve uh paper that we use to kind of set the tone or the color palette for this uh, spread and you can see like it not everything is warm tone pink like that that vellum or washi sticker is definitely a cool tone pink and we have you know the black and pink uh cherry blossom paper not everything is extremely uh matchy matchy but i feel like the theme of pink is definitely noticeable in this journal spread and it's subtle um and i did my stamping in pink as well but i think it gets the message across that you know this is a pink themed spread um without it being too overtly matchy matchy and it also didn't make me feel like i had to subscribe to only this one specific shave shade of mauve um, for this journal spread and i think that's the nice thing about having a monochrome or like limited color palette because um, although you do have some restrictions in which you need to like choose you know one color family and stick to that or maybe two colors uh, there's still a lot of shade variation within that color so you can choose a warm tone pink a lighter pink um, you can choose different values so how light or dark it looks um, and how much saturation is in that um you know piece of paper if is it highly saturated and very very pink or is it very lightly saturated so it's like a little bit more baby pink closer to white and i think that's like the fun part with playing with this um tip um or like i don't know i don't want to say journaling philosophy but um it's nice to kind of keep in mind that you can like really um suit um or change um like the color palette to fit um your needs and it doesn't need to be like one Thing. You can always add another color to your color palette when you're making one of these limited palette journal spreads. I want to show you another one, actually, and this journal spread actually will carry on to the third tip, which we'll get to later. But I wanted to make a green theme spread and the kind of... Um, dictating factor uh, for this journal spread is actually that um, not movie poster this is actually a korean drama called our beloved summer i started watching it i only got one episode in but at the time i was kind of hyped to continue watching it but i wanted to go for a green theme so i used the green torn edges from my own uh washi tape and then i used uh, my decayed leaf sachihara ink pad uh, to stamp that lovely um like green leaf uh stamp and then i just used um, a lovely thin green washi and then again the classic -y green grid and cream tape that i 
peeled off but i ended up putting back in the same place and then again to add a bit more of an organic feel to it i added uh, my brush lettering um, right on the um, side of that uh, poster uh, sticker that i printed out from our beloved summer and i think that was pretty much it it's quite simple i would say this is pretty minimalist uh, because there's not too much going on and i did leave you know a, a lot of white space um everywhere but i think this is a little bit less minimal than the one that we did earlier again i went in with um matchy matchy green since that's um our uh color palette for today and i used a green ink this is um j herbon vert olive um which is a lovely like olive green shade um j herbon just makes lovely inks in general and i feel like this one suits my like color palette for the spread and my like personal color palette that i personally love which is always like you know an olive green and like um warm toned oranges okay my last tip for creating a simple journal spread or creating something in your journal when you have no creative drive is actually just to work with song lyrics i know it sounds like a cliche or something that you've probably heard before but sometimes writing down a quote or writing down your favorite song lyrics kind of just hits a spot in your journal when you're not really feeling very creative and on the screen right now i have a spread on the right hand side of the spread where i was writing about you know phoebe bridger's punisher album and i I loved it so much because I love that album and sometimes um, you might not be passionate about journaling at the time but sometimes when I start um, like writing about my interests it gets me fired up and inspired and therefore creates like a chain reaction and then I feel inspired to journal again so um, sometimes just writing out song lyrics sometimes in like a messy script which i'm doing uh, more often than not is actually quite freeing and it allows me to kind of exercise my creative juices without too much commitment because if i still don't feel very creative after i have written down some song lyrics and did a little bit of decorating but more often than not when i start writing song lyrics i get inspired by the song and i kind of think about the lyrics and maybe try to find some stationery or like a color palette that kind of matches it sometimes i'll look at the album art because i want to see you know what they used or what elements they used in the album art maybe i can kind of translate that onto the journal spread and then it kind of just like builds and it's a nice chain reaction and i usually kind of create one of these song lyric spreads when I'm just feeling stuck in a rut or just want a little simple journal spread to fill out my pages because it's simple and easy and again more often than not it inspires me to journal more. Before we end this video, I wanted to do a quick demo of how I would uh, brush letter a song quote that I've been liking. For this example, I am scripting out a song lyric from Tick Tick Boom the Musical on Netflix. Um, I was so inspired by it and so I decided to brush letter again a quote from it. I'm using uh, one of my favorite um, brush pens. This is the Pentel Sign Pen and I definitely think it's not too hard and not too soft of a nib it's definitely in the goldilocks uh, zone of nib stiffness which is perfect and i went for this kind of loose uh, brush lettering style that i've been liking and this style kind of foregoes the traditional down strokes that are thick and thin up strokes and i kind of just play around with um, my strokes some are thick and some are thin and it doesn't really have any rhyme or reason but i really like this aesthetic because it seems more suited to my journaling style uh, i definitely think that there is a time and place for a more traditional brush lettering style which with the definite thick downstrokes and the thin upstrokes but i think for my journal i like this style because um it is a little bit more effortless and it's easier to achieve and i think it kind of works with everyone's handwriting style because you can just go and handwrite something um, in your regular handwriting but just you know change up um, the stroke width and you can get a fun um, lettering style just like this one and i just finish the spread with some stamping with some stars and i actually used the o stamp from my alpha stamp set and that's pretty much the spread it's very simple and i think it complements um the journaling on the left hand side of the spread without you know drawing too much attention to the quote um 
And again, it was very simple. It didn't take too long. I think, you know, for some people, this might take a little bit longer because some people might not be as um, comfortable with brush lettering, but it doesn't um, mean that you have to brush letter your quote. I actually have some examples that I'm showing you right now that have typewritten quotes from songs, and I think that's equally valid and very aesthetic in my opinion, but you can also just print out some song lyrics and kind of collage around that. Uh, but yeah, that's my last tip for this video. There you have it, folks. These are the three tips or principles to create a simple journaling spread or three tips to get you to create some journal spreads when you are stuck in a rut. I feel like they're interchangeable because I usually gravitate towards these tips or tricks when I'm feeling not that creative and it usually kind of reinvigorates me uh, to create again. So please let me know if you create a minimal or song lyric or or monochrome journaling spread because I would definitely love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram or any other social medias. My Instagram is at Job's Journal if you don't follow me on there. And again, thank you to everyone who responded to the poll um, on my community tab because I was so inspired to hear what you would love to see and hear on the YouTube channel and what types of videos you'd like uh, to see. So let me know if you still have more suggestions down in the comments below because I've been scratching my head and admit Admittedly, I was feeling a little bit stuck in a rut with my YouTube channel and what to post. So you guys have definitely helped me crawl out of that rut, especially with this video. This was actually inspired by one of the kind folks uh, who left a comment. So thank you to everyone who has left a comment there. And thank you to everyone who has supported the shop the past few weeks. I will see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and I love you so much. Bye-bye.